We now apply our factoring theory to solve a new set of equations. We call these quadratic equations. So these are going to be the form, okay, recall, quadratic polynomial is of the form x squared plus bx plus c. To get a quadratic equation, we take one of these, set it equal to zero. For instance, x squared minus 5x plus 6 equal to zero. Now, for the big picture, what kind of things do we already know how to solve? Well, we know how to do linear equations. From linear equations, we go to linear inequalities, or we could go to absolute value equalities where we have absolute value of x instead of x itself. So this is gonna be the next step up from linear equations where we have just x and numbers. So here we have x squared, x, and numbers. How do we break this open? Well, for this part, we're just gonna do basic theory. Our results are only gonna be as good as we're able to factor, but later on we'll have technique that handles everything. Now, what we want to use here, okay, the key tool is going to be the zero product rule, which just says if I multiply two numbers and get zero, one of them had to be zero to start off with. So that would be kind of a little bit more formally, if a times b is zero, then a is zero or b is zero. The way we want to use this, we'll assume, for instance, that this x squared minus 5x plus 6, we know how to factor that. That would give us two factors set equal to zero. And the only way a product of things could be zero is if one of these was zero to start off with. Now, you'll note, well, if I was just thinking about things that could go to zero here, well, if I put A in here, this will go to zero to give me zero. Or I could put B in here, doesn't matter what happens over here, this will go to zero also. The zero product rule says there can't be anything else. So once I have this, those are our only options. Okay, and then kind of the process is, we set each factor equal to zero. We solve to get x equal to a or x equal to b. Let's do it with our example here to see what happens. So we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 equal to zero. I know how to factor that. That's x minus 2 times x minus 3, still set equal to zero. Only way this can be zero is if one of these was zero to start off with. So we'll just set each factor equal to zero x minus 2 equal to 0 and x minus 3 equal to 0, we solve, I get answers x equal to 2 and 3. Now, because we're solving an equation, we should always take our answers and go back to check our work. So if we put 2 back in the original, we note, I have 4 minus 10 plus 6 equal to 0, so that checks out. And then for 3, we get 9 minus 15 plus 6 equal to 0, and that checks out also. Let's formalize this with a checklist. We're trying to solve x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Of course, our first step is gonna be clean up. So no matter what we're given the problem is, if there are parentheses, we wanna distribute, collect terms. If there are fractions, we have an equal sign so we can clear out denominators. And finally, we wanna get things equal to zero on either side. Once we have equals to zero, on the other side, we'll want to put our quadratic polynomial in descending powers of x. So x squared plus bx plus c, because we're going to want to factor that. Now, once we've done that, step two, we see if we can factor. If we can't factor, then our techniques are not strong enough right now. We'll come back to this later when we have the quadratic formula. If we can factor, then we're going to take each factor in step two, set them equal to zero, and then just solve for x to get our solutions. Of course, because we have an equals, we can always check our solutions. Key thing here, make sure you check your solutions in the original problem. If you make any errors, where you check your solutions at could be consistent with your error. If you go to the original, you're 100% certain you're checking the right thing. Now, let's try an example. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. We go to our old technique. We factor. So that's an x plus x plus. There'll be some minuses in it. So I'll have x minus 6 times x plus 1 equal to 0. I set each factor equal to 0. So x minus 6 equals 0 goes to x equals 6. x plus 1 equals 0 goes to x equal to a minus 1. So I get 6 and minus 1 for solutions. Of course, we should check our work. 
but I'll leave that to you since I'm out of room here. Now, let's try one where we need to do cleanup. Then there'll be a common error to be aware of. I have 6x squared equal to 18x. I move everything to one side. So that gives me 6x squared minus 18x equals zero. Here, if I factor, we've got a greatest common factor of 6x. So I pull that out, what's left over is x minus three. I set each factor equal to zero. So I can put the six with the x. 6x equals zero goes to x equal to zero. The x minus three equal to zero goes to x equal to three. And that's our answer. Now, we check our work. So for x equals zero, we go back to the original, we get zero equals zero, so that's good. For x equals three, okay, so we have six times nine, which is 54. 18 times three is 54, and that checks out also. Now, important thing to be careful with. One thing I'm allowed to do at the outset, I note six and 18 are both divisible by six. I can divide both sides by six immediately to make this easier to look at. That would give me x squared equals three x. You might also notice you're allowed to divide both sides by x. That would give us six x equal to 18, and then the only answer you'll get is x equal to three. So if I divide by x, I lose the x equals zero solution. That's why we proceed like this. If you do it like this without this division out of the first step, better to factor things out, you're not gonna lose any information. So be careful of this common error. Here's an example that causes a lot of problems. We have x plus four times x minus five equal to 10. You'll note it looks like something's already been factored here, but we have a 10 on the other side. So the idea is this factorization is really not helpful. If anything, it gets in the way, giving the false sense that the problem's on its way to being solved. Now, what do I do? Well, I need the equal zero, so we're just gonna have to get everything on one side and see what we get. We foil our two on two, so when we do the work, we get x squared minus x minus 20 equals 10. Push the 10 to the other side, we get x squared minus x minus 30 equals zero. This factors as x minus six, x plus five equal to zero. We set each factor equal to zero and solve. So that'll give us x equal to six and x equal to a minus five. That's our solution. Now, we check, if I put the six in to the original, we'll get a 10 times one is 10. If we put a minus five in the original, we get a minus one times a minus 10, also equal to 10, so our work checks out. So this one, another one to be careful with. Let's see some where we break out difference of two squares. So let's try six x squared equal to 54. Now, as noted before, you are allowed to divide both sides by numbers, but we'll just bring it out by factoring. So let's take a look. We bring the 54 to the other side. Greatest common factor is a six. What's left over is x squared minus nine, and that's gonna factor using difference of two squares. Okay, here the a is an x, the b is a three, so I'm gonna get x plus three, x minus three, and that's still set equal to zero. We set each factor equal to zero. Okay, so we can ignore the six. Just think of it as you divide both sides by six. Zero divided by six is still zero. Each factor, we're gonna get x equal to a minus three and a three. So solution plus minus three. If we check, well, if I put plus minus three into x squared, that goes to a nine and we get our answer right away. Six times nine is 54. So, Difference of two squares, fair game for these type of problems. To move this one to the next level, let's also bring in some grouping. So let's take a look. I have x cubed plus five x squared equal to x plus five. Again, we note this is not cleaned up. I need equal zero. So we'll push the x plus five to the other side. 
I have x cubed plus 5x squared minus x minus 5 is 0. And we know we have four terms. So we could try grouping, which may or may not work. We pull the greatest common factor out of each pair. The first pair, we pull out an x squared, leaving an x plus 5. So that's a hint that what's going to be left over on the other one is going to be an x plus 5. And in fact, we note if we want the minus sign on the outside, that's exactly what's going to work. So now we can pull out an x plus 5, and what's left over is going to be an x squared minus 1. Okay, note there's no number here, but it's implicit that minus sign, there's a 1 as a placeholder. So we get x squared minus 1, x plus 5 equal to 0. Now we know that the x squared minus 1 is again a difference of two squares. That factors as x plus 1, x minus 1. So we have three factors. We set each one equal to 0, which I don't have space for. But when you solve, you're going to get x equal to minus 1, 1, and minus 5. Of course, we check our work. But again, we're out of space, so we'll leave that to you. But remember, these are going into the original equation. Now that we know how to solve quadratic equations, we can now look at word problems. A good checklist for word problems, let's try this. So what do we do? If I have a word problem, of course I read it possibly several times to get an idea of what I'm given and what I'm looking for. If I can, I'll draw a picture, and I'll also on that picture label whatever's given to me. The parts I can't label, well, that's probably going to be the thing that we're looking for. Next, for the picture, we hope that there's an equation somewhere, maybe we have to look it up, maybe it's given to us, that's going to let us tie everything together. So once we have the equation, we would want to solve and get an answer. Then once we have an answer, if this is a real word, world word problem, then our answer should respect the real world. So for instance, if we're doing um, lengths, we'll see that in a second. Negative lengths we're not going to consider, so you can throw those solutions away. Also, your answer should fit numerically when you put everything back in the equation. Now let's try. A 10-foot ladder leans against the wall. If the base of the ladder is 8 feet from the wall, how high is the top of the ladder? So what things are we given here? Well, I have a ladder leaning up against the wall, so there's going to be a height, and there's going to be a distance to the base, which is like a floor. So we're getting a right triangle, which we'll give the picture in a second. Note, for this right triangle, we're told the length of the ladder, so that's the diagonal or the hypotenuse. We are given a number for the base, but we have no idea what this height's going to be. So that's going to be the thing I'm looking for. That's what I want to call x, or your favorite variable. So when I strip all the language out, the picture is going to be a right triangle. The length of the ladder is a 10. Okay, the wall's right here. The base is 8 feet from the wall. The height, I don't know. So this is the picture that we're in the business of solving. Now note, right triangles, okay, the most famous right triangle theorem is the Pythagorean theorem. Here's the picture for it. If we have a right triangle, okay, we've got a 90 degree angle. The side that's opposite of that is what we call the hypotenuse. If I give that length C, the other sides we call the legs, and we'll call their lengths A and B, the relation between all of the lengths is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's what we're going to use here. So that's our equation. We take our numbers and our x, we put them into the Pythagorean theorem. The parts have to go where they belong. So we'll have 8 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. And now this just becomes what we've been doing before. Uh, 64 plus x squared is 100. Move the 64 to the other side, that becomes a 36. Move the 36 back, I have x squared minus 36 equal to 0. That's a difference of two squares, so that factors as x plus 6, x minus 6 equal to 0. We get solutions, 6 and minus 6. We're looking for lengths, so I throw away the minus 6, which means the only candidate for my answer is 6 feet. We note, if we take that 6 and put it back on the triangle, 
Okay, we have six, eight, and 10. That's gonna be when we do Pythagoras. 64 plus 36 is 100, and that checks out. Okay, and you'll note, if you know your right triangles, this is a three, four, five right triangle, which is why I picked it. Let's try another word problem. This one's a little bit more involved than just a right triangle. So what do we have? I'll have a three by 10 inch screen set into a frame with a uniform border. So our picture is like I've got three by 10 on the inside. There's gonna be the strip that goes around it, the thickness, so along the top, the bottom, and the sides is all gonna be the same. I suppose that when you put this border on, it's gonna double the area. I want to know how wide that border should be. Now, this is all the answer, which we'll come back to. Let's take a look at the picture without the answer filled in. So what do we have? We know we have a three and a 10 on the inside. We'll move that to the outside. And then the uniform border is what we're looking for, so let's call that X. How does X show up in the picture and how does that help us? Well, X is supposed to be this thickness, so it's there, 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 and there. So, the height of this new rectangle is gonna be 2X plus three. The new horizontal is gonna be 2X plus 10. The old area is 30, we wanna double it, that's gonna be 60. So 2X plus three times 2X plus 10, height times base, is equal to the area, which is 60. And this is the quadratic we're trying to solve. Now note, it looks like it's factored, but it's actually a fake out because we're not equal to zero. So I gotta bring the 60 to the other side. What I'll do first is FOIL, 4X squared plus 26X plus 30 equals 60. The 60 comes over. We have 4X squared plus 26X minus 30 is zero. To make life easier, you can find a greatest common factor in there, so you can pull a two out, but two x squared plus 13 x minus 15 still takes a little bit of work. It will work though eventually, say if you use the, um, the AC method, that's gonna factor as two x plus 15 times x minus one. Okay, so you can foil that to check if you want. We set each factor equal to zero, and then we're gonna get x equal to one and x equal to minus 15 over two. Since we're talking about lengths here, we throw away the minus 15 over two, leaving us only with a one as an answer. Now, if we go back to this picture, well, if we put that one in for X, what we'll get, the new vertical is gonna be a five, the new horizontal is gonna be a 12. What do we get? Well, five times 12 is 60, which is twice the 30 that was the original area. So that checks out. 